On today's show, we break down yesterday's matchup. We look at all the injuries, all the preparations you've got to make, as well as breaking down all the future matchups for Sunday and Monday. And Jason gets taken for a ride. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and stay tuned. Foot Clan, it's a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Foot Clan, brace yourself for an existential question. Okay. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Oh, well, I feel uncomfortable. If not, then it's time to start using SeatGeek. This is where you need to get all your tickets okay. uh, on the SeatGeek app. It's extremely easy to use. They help you out. They, they help you find the, the right tickets for your budget. And look, I'm bringing my pops. I'm bringing him to a Cardinal game later in this year, and I got my tickets on SeatGeek, whether it's concerts, Baseball, basketball, football, festivals, anything else, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. They rate the tickets from 0 to 10 to make sure you're getting a good deal, and it's easy. Green means good, red means bad. And you can get $20 off your first purchase with the promo code FOOTBALLERS at SeatGeek.com or on the SeatGeek app. That's promo code FOOTBALLERS for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. SeatGeek, get your seat. In a seat. <laughs> Download the app today. This is Hall of Fame of Marshall Falk, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Friday, October 8th. The Fantasy Footballers Incognito Edition. I feel like you're in in disguise today, Jason. Because I've got the hat? I don't know. It's pulled down low. How is this you, a how forehead? This? Is this a forehead problem? No, this is a... We were uh, up late last night. Did not shower this morning um and so I you're a just, bit of a mystery yeah are you hiding your face because all your players keep getting hurt oh my goodness i, I if i could hide my team from uh, <laughs> the reaper i would what you oh, will not be able to man. hide is your spin later mm. oh it's a wheel of shame oh, with another day. wheel of shame yeah. Jason edition. I'm not spinning the wheel. I'm not spinning it. I am not spinning it. No, uh, well, that's true. Sorry. Al will spin it, and you will. Yeah. See, look, you get all the benefits, though. That's right. I get the winnings. <laughs> <laughs> the, the winnings. <laughs> so much to talk about today. We had a Thursday night football game. We'll recap it. News and notes to talk about. Way too many injuries. Um, heading into the weekend with players like Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook. Hmm. Joe Mixon. You could have him. You, you yeah. could have him. You might not, though. And last night we didn't have Chris Carson, so we'll talk about that. More of the fantasy forecast, the matchups, and the wheel of shame. We'll be spinning it. We'll be facing off again. Well, not we. Yeah, we're, I got you. Yeah, that was kind of a royal we, but it's not. I mean, gotcha. it's, it's Jason again. <laughs> uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Join the foot.com. the fantasy football community. Definitely head over there. Uh, become a part of the Foot Clan, support the show, and get access to, a, I think, approximately one zillion perks and uh, benefits, which is what we're doing. Yep. Including this one. Foot Clan Friday. Every week we give something away to a supporter at jointhefoot.com, and this week's item coming from pristineauction.com, is a Debo Samuel signed jersey. Oh, but who won it? Oh, it's the Muth is Luth. <laughs> the Muth is Luth over on Patreon. Wonderful. Look, it, it, deserving. Pittsburgh, I know you're listening to this. <laughs> the, the city. Yeah, it, the whole, as a whole. The, and, the and mayor? Especially, Coach. yeah, the mayor, Coach Tomlin, everybody over there. Let him, Luth. Yeah. yeah. Just just okay. let the Muth Luth, Luth. And, Luth and the Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> Luth and the Reigns. Uh, go to pristineauction.com. You can use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. But congratulations, this week's winner of an exclusive signed jersey. Looking at the game last night, 
It sure didn't start. Oh no! No the this, way. We hoped for it was, fantasy. Uh, it was a little bit of a snooze fest. We ended up seven to three going into the half for a for two very high powered offenses. Uh, thankfully, it turned around in the second half. We we had a pretty exciting end to the game. Unfortunately, part of that excitement was Russell Wilson. If you didn't see on the follow through of, of a deep target to Tyler Lockett that just missed. Oh my holy crap, Tyler Lockett was He was five he for was, fifty-seven, but he had ten targets and could have had seven hundred points. He was so close to an, just another monster game. You're talking He had a touchdown in the first half that I I watched. It was like, oh no. Yeah. And then called back. Yay. Hold it. Yeah, he was so close to an absolute monster game. But anyways, Russell Wilson on one of those targets on the follow through. I think it was on he hit Aaron Donald, if I'm not mistaken. And his finger uh did not enjoy that that collision very much. It's started looking wonky. Uh they tried to pop it back into place. But would not pop. He he, I think he came back in and like handed the ball off. But he, he, after that, we did not see him. We saw Geno Smith. You could see Russell on the sidelines, extremely disappointed. Now the update that we got from uh, from Coach Carroll was it's a bad sprain, and we at this moment of recording we don't have further information that surgery is not off the table. But he Russell Wilson is going to miss time. At, for the first time, yes, in it, ten like, years, he's been an Iron Man, but and it's and it's so unfortunate that something that seems so dumb is like, oh, I hurt, I hurt my fingy. You're like, but yeah, you can't. <laughs> but this is the injury he that takes throw. him out. No, he, yeah, where we saw it with like Drew Brees, not a finger, but you know, when you have a hand injury, you can't throw the ball. So unfortunately, if you got Wilson, you better prepare for the future without him as your quarterback what what does that do for your thoughts of DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett these great wide receivers if Geno Smith is your quarterback Geno can, looked okay uh I mean it and it could have been that one thing where it's you're not prepared for the backup and he just does things so a little bit differently than the starter but Geno played well 10 for 17 uh he he ran a little bit and like had a touchdown pass to DK Metcalf he yeah it, it a a good sized one too. I think it was uh like twenty or twenty plus yards. You know, it was, and it was a it was a great pass too. So I'm not you. You don't need to bail on these players. You, you're going to need to adjust your expectations, of of course. Uh, More concerned for Lockett, okay. yeah, to me yeah, than, yeah, that's than fair. Metcalf, just because. Um, you know what makes Russ special is these deep shots he takes all the time and the accuracy downfield, and that's where Lockett thrives. And and Metcalf's going to be the point of target around the end zone. He helps a backup quarterback sure. by being the size that he is. Yeah, Lockett has like that mind meld with Russell Wilson where on scrambles they know where to go. That's poof without Russell Wilson. DK Metcalf is humongous, and he is still humongous with whoever the quarterback That's is. true. Daryl Henderson looked great, left the field for a little while, which yes. is when Sony Michelle got the majority of his work. Michelle did come in for a two-yard touchdown, breaking the hearts of the – Daryl Henderson super game hopes. Yeah. But uh Henderson looked great. I still agree, you know, whether it's you know, he, he had a nice game, but you could probably still trade for him cheaper than his real value. And then uh hey, Robert Woods came to breakfast. Yeah, there we go. It was a bit of an overcorrection here. Fourteen <laughs> targets, twelve for one fifty. Uh and and he had several play a couple plays that he was open on that. You know, Stafford missed him, two of them, I guess, with two targets. But I believe he was your final straw player on the uh, Spotify Green Room show. So are you uh I'm back, baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean when you when you were talking Van Jefferson versus Robert Woods, mm -hmm. that was concluded this week. Uh, they force fed him the ball. Cooper Cup still ended up with a seven for ninety two game. That's fine on a game you don't score and you know, Matthew Stafford was disappointing. I will say that. He has been Well, he also hurt his finger. He did. And he's been inconsistent for a couple of weeks, missing some plays, uh, missed Cooper Cup on a couple of plays. Any other takeaways from this game? It does not seem that Will Disley is a thing without Gerald Everett. The last two weeks has been nothing. No, he does not look like the same player. It looks like the injury's caught up to him. And I would say that Alex Collins does appear to be the dude. He, he didn't oh, do yes. anything special in this game, 15 for 47. Um, but he, he had 15 carries. Uh, DJ Dallas had four. 
Um, and outside of the two-minute drill, you know, Alex Collins was still uh, utilizing the pass game a little bit. Um, so he would be the guy, uh, as expected, should Chris Carson miss more time. Yeah, I guess the only saving grace for Russ is that there's 10 days until their next matchup. And from what I understand, Matthew Betts was talking about the surgery. You know, maybe it's not going to be as long-term as, as some are fearing. I uh, feel like Russ is the type that he's going to play in 10 days. He shouldn't. Pete Carroll says it's, he heals quick. It's it, it, He'll play poorly. Uh, you know, remember when he was out there in his moon boots? Oh, yeah. He with all the walk ankle injuries? With all the ankle injuries. And he's, he's like not good for the team, but he was still out there. Yeah, could happen. We'll find out more later this week and into next. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Well, we found out shortly after yesterday's episode that Calvin Ridley will not travel to London. He is out this mm -hmm. week. Wide receiver for the Falcons. Personal matter. Won't play against the Jets. Russell Gage also is out. So your start of the week in Kyle Pitts um, is going to be very necessary. Cordero. Uh, yeah. And, I, and I, I'm and i going to throw the name out there again. I, I do think Mike Davis is a fine play this week. They have to be more involved in the run, and the matchup is good. Yeah, I, I'm starting to to uh, come around there, too, thinking Mike Davis is sneaky. And what, uh, you got uh, Zacharias? The lad. Oh, the Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus. Yeah, the wee little man. Christian McCaffrey practiced in a limited fashion. Feels great, has a chance to play Sunday. I am in the positive side of him playing. Believe he'll be out there. Jason just crossed both his fingers. And his toes. Please. <laughs> A.J. Brown practiced in full. He'll be back. Yeah, he's a go, and people have been asking me, you know, what do I do with A.J. Brown? And to me, he's practicing in full. If he's on the field, he's he's right back to where I would have him ranked normally. A, a mid-level guy, like Sterling Shepard, when he gets back out there, I'll probably rest him a week because there is higher... Your, rest him on your bench as he plays real football? Yes, rest him on my bench <laughs> as he plays real football. Um, you know, because there is still uh, the chance make of... make sure he's 100 reaggravation with a hamstring injury but when you're a star like AJ Brown you you do need to start him when they come back what about this so in this game they play Jacksonville your start of the week is Marvin Jones Jr would you play Marvin Jones or would you go right back to the well with AJ Brown I go to AJ AJ Brown. Brown Joe Mix uh Julio didn't practice I don't yeah. think he's gonna play Joe Mixon did not practice uh not spotted early today right now it looks like he's gonna miss the game Zeke returned to a limited practice he seems to be fine same with Antonio Gibson Dalvin Cook didn't practice on Thursday. It's going to be Dalvin Cook watch again and maybe I, the least fortunate situation possible, which is active but not 100. And I I think we have a decent chance that Dalvin Cook is out this week. Like, they're, they're playing the Detroit Lions. I know that teams, you can't overlook your opponent, but Madison, I mean, Coach Zimmer is, has been talking up Alexander Madison uh, as of recently, and they if they have the confidence in him that he can carry the the, the rushing attack against the, the Lions, a, a very inferior opponent, then it for the long term of the season, it would make sense to give Dalvin Cook a week off. Unfortunately, uh, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, both early games this week, so it'll make the decisions a little easier. Chase Edmonds didn't practice on yeah. Thursday with a shoulder injury, worked on the side. Today's a big day to find out if there's something really brewing there, if this was just a, you know, a, a small thing. And then kind of got blindsided yeah, this what? morning. <laughs> TJ Hawkinson was limited on Thursday, and then the, Dallas, uh, the Lions beat writer, Dave Briquette, reported that Dan Campbell said Hawkinson has a chance to play. What? I mean, we here's the thing. We, we knew that he was, you know, lim a limited participant, uh, with a, des a knee designation, and you know, we saw this, but nobody made it seem like it was uh, a worrisome, a serious thing possible of missing a game. But then I trade for him last night. Oh, and now it's like, oh yeah, he's got, he's got. Don't worry, he's got a chance to play. Now is this is this George like, Kittle chance to yeah. play like last week? Is this like a everyone has a chance to play? Is this a good <laughs> chance? I don't think yeah. it's that one, Mike. Um. Yeah, it, I mean, you have to make plans. You have to make plans, um, and those plans uh, hurts. Those plans hurts a lot. Oof. Yeah, you're not you're, wrong. You're hurting. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, for people, uh, I mean, I'll just... That's big uh, of you to admit that publicly, that you might be urting this I week. might be urting. I would prefer to be conklining, um, <laughs> and I would prefer to be Dan Arnold. It's conking. Um, so, Dan Arnold, <laughs> Zach Ertz, Tyler Conklin, now, if Hawkinson's out. I don't know. What about old Ricky Seals Jones? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I would prefer... He'd be fourth on the list. Which Which do you prefer to do, though? The conk conk? Or the conk conk is, Kong or the Kong seal is, no is really? better than the seal. Mm, I like the seal noise. Well, I mean, if it was kissed by a rose, yeah. <laughs> but this is the animal. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, that song is. Oh, it's a that, mad jam. That, that song still slays people. Fire, <laughs> fire that thing. In case up. you wonder. Oh, I'm just, I'm just like it's one of those '90s songs where people might be like, oh, you know, it was overrated. No. That song will punch you right in the feels. Batman Forever? Yes. Which, that movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Naeem Hines didn't practice. Jimmy G didn't practice. George Kittle didn't practice. Elijah Mitchell was limited. And right now, uh, it seems like maybe it's a Trey Lance. I think it'll be. It'll yeah, be it does nice. appear that that's. I, I think we're late enough in the week. Um, and the quote from uh, Shanahan was talking about how Jimmy Garoppolo has to be able to fully step into his throw. Um, yeah, th those aren't inspiring words. If Russell is a fast healer, I think Jimmy G's on the other he's side a, of things. He's a fast injurer. Yes, he is. Well said, Mike. Uh, Devontae Parker, sore hamstring. Ah, oh, come on, Game man. Game time decision for a player with an opportunity. I mean, Jalen Waddle, the last man standing. Mike Gesicki. Yep, those two, and then... Close your eyes and put them in your lineup. All right. Any other headline injury players that you want to talk about? We'll have the Injury Blitz podcast from our uh, my new podcast co-host, Matthew Betts. Oh, but yes. The only other one I would highlight is Curtis Samuel did not practice on Thursday. We we talked about the Wednesday. Maybe they were just resting ah, on yeah. my groin. Um, this has been – this is not a couple weeks thing. This is going on six months. So um, – I'll just say it. I'll I'll say it. he is my drop for my tight end pickup. He's mm -hmm. already set queued to drop in the morning. The uh the Giants wide receivers Shepard and Slayton they did not practice on Thursday, so I would be moving forward with uh, that they will be out and adjusting the rankings there. And Teddy Bridgewater limited again, so he's at least on track that he could clear the concussion protocol. I don't like saying it out loud, but again, this is the high, one of the highest over unders of the week. The Dallas New York game, Tony. Galladay. Yes. Ingram. Uh, yeah, I I don't think I'd play Ingram. He was on every one of the waivers that I looked at, and I uh, would put him sixth. I think he'll do all right this week. I mean, he I mean, he has a plan. His plan is to get targeted a ton and not produce for fantasy. That's right. Um, He's which, so good at that, man. Yes. I don't know if That's there's ever thing. been a player who has been targeted more and produced less for as long a period of time as Evan Ingram. Yeah. yeah, you know how we say, like, uh, the Kyle Pitts, I was like, oh, just trust the more predictable metrics. Mm -hmm. With Ingram, just trust the lack of production. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, results <laughs> over process with Evan Ingram. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. We're going to jump right into the matchups. And uh, before we do that, I want to thank HelloFresh. Look, you know the story. HelloFresh. Fresh, pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes, and uh, shows up at your doorstep. No more grocery store trips. You can actually save money uh, because you get them all portioned the way you need to actually cook the meal. That's why they're America's number one meal kit. So if you've been waiting, uh, wait no longer. They have a big family-friendly meal menu for back-to-school season, easy recipes, drama-free dinners. Like your parent. That's a delight. You know how important that is. I think that's a lot of the times why people eat out is it's like, oh, let's go drama-free tonight. Yep. So you can do that with HelloFresh, and they've got a nice, uh, vast menu that makes everybody happy. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers14, use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals, plus free shipping. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash footballers14. Use that code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals, plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And Foot Clan, if you are one of the two out of three men in the U.S. that will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35... 
Keeps is here to help you keep your hair. There are only two FDA-approved medications that can help prevent hair loss, and Keeps offers both of them. They have a simple, stress-free way to help you keep your hair. They're convenient virtual doctor consultations, medications that come straight to your door in discreet packaging every three months. You don't have to leave your home, and it's a low-cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month. And Keeps has the generic versions of those uh, medications. They have more more five-star reviews than any of its competitors, and prevention is key. It can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. If you're ready to take action and help prevent your hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's Keeps.com slash footballers for your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. Back into the Week 5 matchups yesterday on the show. We covered the London game, Jets-Falcons, the Packers-Bengals, the Lions-Vikings, the Broncos-Steelers, Dolphins-Buccaneers, and the Saints at Washington. So if you want the breakdown on those matchups, flip back to yesterday's episode, and you'll get it. Magic. Eight games left. Eagles travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Eagles are one and three. Panthers three and one. The DK Sportsbook line has the Panthers minus three. The over under is forty five. Do you believe in the rushing touchdown leader Sam Darnold in this <laughs> matchup? Christian McCaffrey could be back. That would be a a big deal, I think, for Carolina's offense and confidence levels that they can move the football. How are you feeling about this matchup? That Panthers D sitting eighth against quarterbacks, third against running backs, fifth against wide receivers, L-E-G-I-T? Yeah, I, I do think that they are um, a legitimate uh, defense, a difficult matchup for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. I don't look at this as – I don't look at the Panthers as a uh, – Defense that has to be avoided right now. Yeah. Really, when it comes to matchups, you want to look at the extremes. The people that get torched, the people that give up nothing. And then outside of that, you know, th there's good defenses and less good defenses, but these are NFL teams. They can score them. So I'm not, I'm not fearful. I'm not binging Jalen Hurts or uh, Devonta Smith. I think those two guys are people that have to be in your lineups. Um, but Miles, uh, Miles is someone that I would prefer to bench until, until we know either one of two things that the game plan is going to change or that it's a predictable victory. I still would confidently start Miles Sanders in a predictable victory. If if the game happens to be one where the Eagles come out, jump up on top, and and ride to a victory, I'll, I'll bet Miles ends up with a good game. But when they're down, he does not seem to be as important to the offense and to this system as. You would hope he is, especially because Kenneth Gainwell specializes in, in those attributes. Yeah, I think you summed it up well. On the other side, one of the other final straw players is Robbie Anderson. 11 targets last week, which was a lot more than what he saw in the first three weeks, with, but I, I think McCaffrey's no McCaffrey. back. Yeah, I think McCaffrey's back, so I prefer to put him on the bench if I can. I'd rather watch the final straw experiment from the bench. But DJ Moore is locked and loaded. Christian McCaffrey, if he's active, no hesitation. Right, none. Uh, if he's if he's active, even if you get half of Christian McCaffrey, it will be worth more than a full Chuba Hubbard. So he's in your lineup. Um, and I would start Robbie a full Anderson. Chuba. <laughs> Never go full Chuba. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would uh, I would start Robbie Anderson if Christian McCaffrey is inactive. Dallas Goddard. Uh, if if yeah. you're willing to play Dallas Goddard, you need to be willing to play Zach Ertz because they're the they're the same player at this point. <laughs> they are like and their opportunities are are exactly the same. It's it, touchdown da chance. Dallas Goddard is the superior player in my opinion, athletically but, for sure. It, but that's not stopping them from sharing. It's a it's very similar to what's going on in Dallas with uh, Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz, except. We haven't had one of the tight ends separate when it comes to production. The Patriots at one and three travel to take on the Houston Texans at one and three. Reading that is a bit shocking. They're the same record. The Texans much maligned, and then the Texans one and three. are second in their division, man. 
That's not true, <laughs> is it? Did you make yourself laugh there? Uh, I, I just laughed. Well, I already knew. True? I already knew the joke. Uh, but yeah, it is a laughable fact. The DK Sportsbook line: DraftKings has it. Patriots minus nine on the road. Over under is thirty nine and oh, a half. Well, great news because the Patriots are also second in their division. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, you don't play any. I'm going to say it. Don't play a Texan. Including Brandon Cooks. Including Cooks? 100% yeah. Five including. catches every week? No, I'm not playing Brandon Cooks. There is one thing Bill Belichick has always done. This is historically, statistically proven. The number one weapon for a team has a nerfed game almost always against Bill Belichick. What now, revenge game, bro? Sh well, that's Brandon like Cooks every has team. a lot of revenge games. <laughs> um, Maybe that's why he's putting up so many numbers. He's talented. He could break a long Perma path. revenge. <laughs> but I'm going to bet against – this is a bet against Davis Mills. I'd and play those Mooney. bets have cashed. Okay, so yeah, Darnell Mooney would play? I'd play Mooney. I'd play Rondell Moore. I'd take a shot wow. with Rondell. I'd play A.J. Green. What about Juju Smith-Schuster against the Denver Broncos? Sure. That one I would maybe, just because of the injury, I'd probably play Cooks. I'd play Cooks. Yeah, I don't want to completely, like, he's not a must bench. Jaylen, I'm just not excited. Jalen Waddle against Tampa Bay. Oh, definitely Jalen Waddle to me. Really? Yeah, Jalen Waddle two huh. weeks ago had like 13 targets. Okay. Is uh, involved. You can't run on Tampa Bay. you got to throw the ball. And, and I would expect Beckham? to see. Uh, yeah, probably Beckham. I mean, I would expect to see another 5 for 50 game from, from Cooks. So, you're so not it's, it's not. It's not saying that like he is going to goose or be worthless. It's just I don't see him having a good game against the Patriots. And I, he could have a terrible game. Like right. this this is the best defensive matchup of the year. Like going into a week. Mac Jones coming off his first multi touchdown game. Damian Harris is a smash play this week at running back because the matchup is delightful. Texans giving up twenty three point five fantasy points to opposing running backs. And almost all of that's going to be Damian Harris in this game. And then Jacoby Myers, ho-hum, he doesn't score, but he's got at least eight catches in the last two games. He is a comfortable – like, would you play Jacoby Myers over Brandon Cooks? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Jaco I mean, Davis Mills last week had 87 total passing yards for the game. Um, the week prior, 168. The week prior, 102. This is – Yucky poo poo pants. Uh, all right. Mm. Here's a fun fact. The Patriots have had a different leading receiver in each game this year. Aguilar, then James White, then Kendrick Bourne, then Jacoby Myers. Oh, Mac Jones, he spreads the ball around. I mean, it could be Nikhil Harry this week. Yeah. But it probably won't be. Yeah. No. It could be Brandon Bolden. Or Johnny Smith. Hunter yeah. Henry. Well, this this Let's is just a, keep naming this Patriots. is a problem. Um Confidence level, though, it's highest with Damian Harris. And then are you playing the tight ends? They both scored last week, right? I, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to play the tight ends. Um, I don't look the direction. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, how bad the offense has been for the Houston Texans. The offense has not been good for the New England Patriots. They're not putting up a ton of yardage, a ton of points. Um, it'll be nice this week I you know I maybe maybe I mean obviously the Texans aren't good so if you want to take your shot but I all those other tight ends I named earlier I would rather play over uh these two options Chicago Bears two and two taking on the three and one Las Vegas Raiders DraftKings Sportsbook line Raiders minus five at home over unders 44 and a half in this one Justin Fields will get the start now and forever in Chicago Derek Carr he didn't have a great game. No. Did, he did bounce back in the second half, and my goodness, they, he was really close to another deep bomb that would have given him three touchdowns in that game. So uh, I, I I like the Raiders to win this one. I don't think that the Bears will get enough done without David Montgomery to be their linchpin of the offense. Damian Williams will get a lot of work, but I don't know if they'll have enough on the offensive side of the ball to get past the Raiders in that defense. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting to see what is this Bears offense now that they are fully committed to Justin Fields? Will they change how they're running things? Like, will they will they will they formulate it appropriately around the skill set of Justin Fields? And what do they do that that their superstar running back is not out there? And I I imagine that will turn into some more running for Justin Fields. I'm not. There's other streamers that I would prefer over Justin Fields this week, but he is he's definitely on. On a, you should be paying attention and watching and seeing what he ends up doing, but like Allen Robinson 
and Darnell Mooney against this Raiders defense that is currently seventh against fantasy wide receivers. Are you? I'm, I mean, I'm, I guess you said you'd play. We you said you'd play Mooney over uh, Cooks, but in general, are you trying to find other options? I I would personally be benching both of these guys if I have other options. Um, you don't know what you're going to get in either player. You saw, you know, a heavily targeted game to Darnell Mooney, but that's one game. That is incredibly small sample size. He's also limited with a groin injury in practice today, so Mooney might. If Mooney is out, then I think you can you can confidently flex Allen Robinson. Um, I but otherwise, I don't want to start either of these guys. I would. Uh, you know, the, here's the tough part. We're at the we're at week five. We've had enough of the season. We've seen a couple of games, and you've got to answer questions like Jacoby Myers or Allen Robinson, right? Which just seems so crazy. And um, I think I would lean Jacoby Myers um, over Allen Robinson. I mean, both have the rookie quarterback uh, situation, but they're not equal. And so far, the wide receiver. Uh, position has not done well against the uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. And keep in mind, they've played some great wide receivers. It's not like, um, you know, the, the, the Raiders have just faced nobodies. Let me ask you a question, Mike. How This is kind of a temperature check on Damian Williams and the start potential. Are you playing him above Cordero Patterson against the Jets? Ooh. Oh, that's a great question. The... What seems like secure volume for Damian over the guy, the guy that just keeps scoring touchdowns in a, in a plus matchup without Calvin without Ridley. without Calvin Ridley I oh, I guess I'll play Patterson there. What about Damian Harris at Houston over or or Damian Williams? If uh, scoring format will matter there, like if it's PPR, I would go with Damian or uh, with a. Uh, with, with, uh, with Williams, Damian. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take Damian in that one for <laughs> sure. Nice call. Lock it in. I, I would take Damian Williams over Damian Harris this week as well. But Damian I, Williams or Antonio Gibson? Oh, Gibby Gibson. Yeah, you guys, uh, you feeling good about Gibby? I'm feeling, feeling okay. great about his athleticism. He's yes, very strong and fast. And on the other side of the ball, uh, you can't play Edwards. Unfortunately, the team just does not game plan for him. Henry Ruggs is a Dart throw as always. Uh, Hunter Renfro is just – he has five catches every game. He's hes about as safe as a PPR option can get. Not uh, exciting. No, you know, he's definitely not exciting, but maybe if your your lineup needs a little bit of balance. and the But kind of the, the note I want to give here for the Raiders is I think Kenyon Drake should be stashed, especially if you need uh, – a, a lotto ticket. I mean, we, we're seeing this a lot with you know the running backs on unfortunately suffering injuries. With Peyton Barber out, uh, with turf toe, and Josh Jacobs has already been shaky this year. I think that Drake is a is someone that on on Sunday morning you should just throw on the back of your bench just in case. I do think Jacobs will have a solid game this week. Um, yeah, RB two type of performance. If the Raiders win this game, and Andy, you said you've got them winning this game, Mike. Do you see it going as, that direction? As does uh, DraftKings, right? Five. So usually, Josh Jacobs in yeah. victories is a very good fantasy option. Cleveland Browns at three and one take on the Los Angeles Chargers at three and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Chargers minus two, over unders forty seven. This is an exciting game. I think uh, there is a, a defensive a Browns defense narrative for this game how solid they've been, how they may stifle the Chargers. But then there's the – look, Justin Herbert's just been outstanding. Yes. Seven touchdowns over the last two weeks. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are going to threaten any secondary. And then Jared Cook's been involved. Austin Eckler out of the backfield is always a threat. So do you have any hesitation on the Chargers' side of the ball, staying in the flames with these offensive options simply because they're playing the Browns who have been – Really good against opposing wide receivers. You just saw him shut down to a degree, you know, Adam Thielen completely, and then Jefferson, they slowed down a little bit. Yeah, I don't have a, an ounce of hesitation, but I have completely different expectations. There are, um, you know, I, I don't see a world where you're just going to have 40 points put on the on the board and Mike Williams and Keenan Allen both dominate. Um, but I can't fathom benching Eckler, Keenan Allen, or Mike Williams. Those those three are kind of they're auto locked. You're gonna have good weeks and bad weeks, ups and downs, and right now they are you're gonna you're gonna have all of it in your starting roster. Just manage your expectations. If you're going up against a great opponent 
and you've got you know Mike Williams there, maybe you need to swing for the fences with your flex. Okay. Anything to add there, Mike? Mm -mm. It just if. If they're able to kind of hold Keenan and Mike Williams in check, does where are you, Jason, with Jared Cook? You have a you may have a tight end situation. Uh, I don't know if Jared Cook is on our waivers, but let's just I don't think let, he let's, is in ours. Let's just but, pretend yeah. that he was. If he was there, would you be picking up Conklin uh, or if, Jared Cook? If he was there, I'd be picking up Jared Cook. Okay. Um, I, I ironically that was a player I traded away for Hawkinson. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, you know, he's he's been out there over half the snaps every single week. The week before, 72% of snaps. And he's gotten enough targets, 8-5. Uh, he had a down game two weeks ago and then seven last week. He's involved in the red zone. Uh, I think Kyuk is is a waiver wire guy that you should, you know, if, if he were on the waivers, I'd be willing to play him. Nick Chubb, always in yep. your lineup, but uh, his NFL numbers never match his fantasy production. Kareem Hunt. Leads yeah. Cleveland with 121 receiving yards this season. He's yeah, and he'll probably be their leading receiver. I, I, I think one thing that can't be uh, dismissed here is how good the the Los Angeles Chargers yes. defense has been as well. This is a game where uh, I'm I'm curious. I would imagine the line might have opened higher, but this could be a defensive matchup. Both of these teams' defenses have uh, met and exceeded expectations so far this season. Yeah, Chargers number two against opposing fantasy wideouts. Disappointing game for Beckham. Baker was managing and is managing an injury. I did something very exciting yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. I I took away a temptation in my life. Mm. I have had Odell Beckham Jr. at various points in the last two years. And the name still bears so much weight that I am always tempted. I, I have a hard time benching him in games like this. So I traded him away. Smart. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, and because I would have had him out there again, and I don't think it's going to be a great week, but you, you look at the weapons they have right now and you go, how does Beckham not do something right? I mean, they don't yeah, have yeah. Jarvis Landry and, and they're going to need to throw the football to be fair to Beckham two weeks ago on his debut. He looked great. Like the, the, the player and he just missed this past week. It's, it's so bizarre how there's just. Something is just not connected with Baker and, and Odell. The Giants take on the Cowboys in Dallas. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Cowboys minus seven. The over-under is 52 and a half points. I think this is the matchup that I'm the most excited about for this week. Uh, it'd be easy to say it's Kansas City, Buffalo. We just heard that that game might have some rain in it. A little bit rain. A little bit rain, as we yes. say. Uh, Brooks, you caught the How Bizarre reference oh. under my oh, breath? For sure. Yeah, wow. Cruising down the freeway in your hot, hot car. How Bizarre. How bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Daniel Jones has been uh, better than advertised so far this year in terms of being able to move the offense. And Kenny Galladay has helped that equation, and he's been better as well. Kadarius Tony had six catches for 78 yards last week. Saquon Barkley looks to be himself in the overtime win. Uh, Ingram looks to be himself. Yeah, the same old, same old. But what are you doing decision making wise on the Giants side? Are you, are you where I'm at, where Galladay is a, a start and Tony is a kind of more of a desperation flex? That's where I'm at. I, I, yeah, I, I want in on this fifty two and a half points. I and know you have it, Daniel Jones as your start, right? Yes, yeah, I do. I, yeah. So here we go. <laughs> here we go. With Mike Daniel Wright Jones has again. Daniel Jones as his start of the week. Is uh, that right? That is that is accurate, and it's a division game, and sometimes division games, like promises, they could be crazy. We saw it last night with the uh, the Rams and the Seahawks going into halftime with ten points on the board. But this is you got to trust the process of of uh, the the bookmakers. They know what they're doing. These are two offenses that can move, two defenses that can give up points as well. So I I want in on this uh, wherever I can. On the other side of the ball, Dak, very yep. efficient last week, four touchdowns on only under 200 yards. Zeke is locked into your lineup. I will say this. I could see, you know, and I'm looking especially at DFS or, or dart throws on my team, like this could be a game where Tony Pollard gets the fourth quarter, right? Like if, if the Cowboys take care of business, they're at home, they're heavily favored, you could see 10-plus opportunities for Pollard, could. which, you know, he's been the yards per carry leader in football been very efficient. I don't hate Tony Pollard this week. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, if you want a matchup that you could play him in, uh, you know, being uh, heavily favored at home is is always is always nice. They, I think you could maybe make an argument that it's the super high scoring games where maybe they're down, where Tony Pollard might be more necessary. That's what it sounds like because you view him as the scat back, the satellite back. But the reality is, if you look at the routes run and how they're using Zeke, that's not really just the case. The case is not like that that uh, Pollard is their passing downs back and Zeke isn't so I, I would agree with you I think Tony Pollard could be a flex option in this he could it's he's it it's hard to get a grasp on on Pollard when he will or will not go because you had the game against Philadelphia where it, I mean it was 41 to 21 by the end but it was a uh, shellacking and Tony Pollard only saw 12 opportunities in that game. He's, his opportunities since the Week 2 uh, explosion have actually gone down every week in in uh, carries and targets. And as far as Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, um, CeeDee Lamb's been very disappointing the last two weeks. They have not needed to throw the ball a lot. This could be one of those games where that, that happens. But I, uh, I, I think the passing game is great. I think it's just the ebbs and flows of uh, a normal season. And I would take the combined, you know, Cooper and Lamb, I would say will score more fantasy points this week than Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. So I, I would take this side based on these matchups. I, so if you're fine starting those guys, I think you should be absolutely fine starting Cooper and Lamb. I agree. I think this might be the bounce back week for CeeDee Lamb. I like him uh, to break out of this kind of two-week funk and uh, hopefully – the Giants can compete enough to make that necessary because the, the one thing we've learned this year is Dallas, they can run the football, and mm -hmm. if they are effective that way, you may see a disappointing and uh, performance from wideouts or, or even Dak. Uh, Breaking news. Not the fun kind, but Rob Gronkowski is out. Oh, I thought that was the breaking news that I just saw, which was T. Higgins is in, which is the fun kind. Oh, okay. Oh, well, well we've, great. we've brought balance to the force. Net neutral. We are we are even. And we weren't really thinking Gronk was back, were we? No. No. And we were kind of thinking that Higgins was going to play, weren't we? Yeah, so yeah. maybe that was just news. <laughs> but it broke live on the show. Right? Yeah. yeah. And maybe I have it wasn't news. Maybe it was just breaking. Just the breaking part? <laughs> There's just the breaking all right, the 49ers, 2-2, two and two, taking on the 4-0 oh. Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cardinals, 26 and a half points. How come we haven't said there other teams are 4-0? Oh? There aren't any. Oh. Uh, the DraftKings that's, Sportsbook that's line, shame. Cardinals minus 4, over-under is 49 points. You know, what's what's been nice for uh, Arizona sports is that when we're very prideful and boastful about our teams, nothing ever it goes works wrong. It works out. 2-0 like in the NBA Finals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll notice I'm not wearing an NBA champions hat. I am wearing. You're an wearing NBA the. Finals we hat. got there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cardinals four and 49ers two and two. We we talked earlier that uh, you know it might be a Trey Lance game. He may get the start for the first time in his career. Arizona is five one and one in its past seven games against San Francisco. It's something that I think is interesting. They're at home. Um, is that the new line, Brooks? Because I had seen five and a half yesterday. Is this line changed? I believe it opened at six. So it has mm. moved to be – it's Cardinals minus four. I wonder if that's with the trending towards Lance. The very uh, – I, I don't think know. It, it's probably just people are taking the points. So how do we see this game breaking down? I think this is the bounce back game for DeAndre Hopkins. You do – you had a, an injury limited game. You had a Jalen Ramsey game. This is the game where I feel like uh, Hopkins is going to remind us why he was such a high draft pick, and uh, so I'm expecting big things out of him in this matchup. San Francisco's secondary was starting Josh Norman a couple of weeks ago. This is not; they have not been as good as we've we've hoped or thought that they might be able to be, and they've been pretty bad against opposing fantasy quarterbacks as well. So I have great confidence in Hopkins this week. I don't ever really know who to have the most confidence in outside of Hopkins. And when it when it comes to the other three, and really it's the other two. I don't I don't know how easily we could throw Rondell Moore into the equation, but what you know is that there is there's a lot of fantasy production that will be had and shared across this wide receiver core, and you are playing 
you're playing like 50-50 roulette because you know you're betting on green uh, black or red here because um I don't think you know it, Christian Kirk I, I played him last week one target one reception five yards was still on the field for 72 percent of the snaps has half of his games great half of his games duds but because it just went the uh, it went to AJ Green, it went to a different player, and I think it's going to continue to be rotating uh, through the course of the season. I don't believe that AJ Green or Christian Kirk or Rondale Moore will fully entrench themselves as the clear cut every week number two target. It's just who's open. Um, I will say this: Chase Edmonds, if he doesn't play, um, the 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 shorter you know the slot guys might be a little bit more involved, uh, Rondell Moore and Christian Kirk, but what you're doing here, I think you can start them. I think you can start Christian Kirk. Um, you AJ can start Green. AJ Green because you're taking a shot. We talk about all the time. All wide receivers are inconsistent, so go with the ones who can actually have a really good game. And I, I think you know Christian Kirk has obviously shown two top 20 weeks, one top 10 week already. So if Chase Edmonds is out, is James Conner automatically in? Oh, yeah. Yes. 20 opportunities last week. No question. Yeah, he's, he's a touchdown threat, and he'll be the guy. Um, Kyler, he's locked into your lineup. I agree with everything you said. It's funny because as the A.J. Green truther, somebody where A.J. Green's had six targets in every game, he's double digits three consecutive games, I still am kind of looking to start somebody else because I don't think the ceiling is high enough. Like if you just need six targets and whatever that becomes with A.J. Green, that's fine. But like I, I'm playing Marvin Jones over him this week because mm -hmm. I want ceiling. Mm -hmm. The other side of the ball, it's very difficult to project here. 22 points is the implied point total for San Francisco. Look, if Trey Lance starts, you start him for fantasy over uh, almost everybody. Would you start him over Ryan Tannehill uh, against yeah. Jacksonville? Would you start him over Sam Darnold against Philadelphia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I the only thing I'll say is you know first game jitters, there is the the low, the the interception risk, the fumble risk, but because of how much he runs, you're still going to end up fine. You're not going to end up with Justin Fields' game where it's three and then seven points where he doesn't run the ball at all. Trey Lance will make a play in this game or yeah, and two. You, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, we talked about Justin Fields having that nice rushing baseline of security as well. Justin Fields is a supreme athlete a great mobile quarterback, but it's not in the same stratosphere as far as rushing production as Trey Lance. Trey Lance is much more of the Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray-esque rushing volume. But I, I don't – you know, the Cardinals have been really, really good on defense. They're at home. They've been great in their own building on defense historically. Ninth against quarterbacks, tenth against running backs, second against tight ends. Look, I don't have any – prescription for the running back room in San Francisco. If Elijah is active, which it looks like he will be, he's going to split time, not just with Trey Sermon, but with Kyle Juszczyk. And I don't want to mess with any of them against Arizona's defensive front. That's distributing 18 points across multiple players in the running back room. Yeah, you got to let that shake out. Uh, and On the bench. Yeah, like Elijah, it's this is one of those situations I'm benching him. If he happens to have an explosive big game, Great. I'm cool. Move, cool. Yeah, moving forward, now I have confidence to start him. Uh, but for San Francisco, yeah, Trey Lance, great streaming option. You got to stay in the in the flames with Debo here. And then if I mean, if George Kittle, who is not practicing, if, he's, if he plays, you're, you're not streaming off of the waiver wire over an active George Kittle. But that's it. Hey, like Brandon Ayuk with Trey Lance. No, thank you. No way. Uh, Trey Sermon. Debo's obviously no. in. Yes. That's, yes. He, yeah, he's he's the one I would play. Also, it's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I know, Al, you've been really pining for more Debo drops. Correct. And do you he's feel fulfilled now? I do. Um, it he is just wants that because he's on his fantasy team. It doesn't. That's not like playing. Like you don't have to knock on wood after you hit that every time with Debo, do you? I mean, okay, apparently you do. What yeah, has been to, knocked on? To phrase it that you want Debo drops, that's that's not something I would ask for. Max that's, Williams, were you going to bring him fair. up? I wasn't going to bring up Max Williams, but we can. I was going to bring up uh, Byron Murphy 
that is the cornerback for the Arizona Cardinals who's been outstanding this year. Not been practicing. There is a very good Ew. chance he does oh, not. No. Yeah, there's a very good chance he doesn't play this week, which would change oh, no. the Cardinals' defense quite drastically. I don't know that it would do enough for me to start Ayuk. In fact, I know it would not. I mean, no, 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 no. It, like, I would not. No, no, no. No. Um, no, no. But it could do enough where he ends up with a decent game, but be aware of uh, that injury for whatever you want. Whatever you know for your, if you're if you're picking against the spread, that's All gonna right. make a difference. Sunday night football. Okay. Kill. Yes. Buffalo Bills three and one taking on the two and two Chiefs. DraftKings Sportsbook line Chiefs minus three over under is fifty six. That's what you like to see. Chiefs with almost uh, what thirty points. Bills with twenty seven, and. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, instant replay of what the AFC title game last year. Who are you sitting in this game? That's the real question. Ooh, I mean, me. It's on always the couch. been yeah. That's good. Good answer. Good answer. Mahomes, uh, Devin, Cl Clyde, with two straight top twenty weeks. Jason, uh, you're no, you're definitely not sitting. Uh, Clyde. No, Devin, I was I was doing the starts. Oh but, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's back to back hundred yard uh, games. I mean, the Bills' defense has been outstanding, so it'll be really interesting. Um, Devin Singletary is the only player that's kind of questionable that I might, uh, I might prefer to bench. Yeah. Singletary last week, 15, he's had more than 12 opportunities every game. Does that intrigue you? I mean, the, the defense, does that change your opinion? I guess, because the defense uh, has been so shoddy. I mean, the chiefs have got to be a bottom five defense in football. Yeah. I'm not super into the Singletary play. Uh, all right. I, any... I don't think I look at Singletary and Moss very differently from a recommendation standpoint. I, I, they've both been seeing tons of work. Yeah, they, they, uh, they are, they're mostly split. I would just say Zach Moss has a little bit higher touchdown uh, potential than, yep. than Singletary. Agreed. Josh Allen's in. Stephon Diggs, yep. Emmanuel yep. Sanders, sure. Yep. Tyreek, yeah. Kelsey, mm-hmm. Dawson Knox, he's had – Yes. I didn't vet it, but I, I read that he had – more targets than Beasley for three straight weeks, or it targets or routes run. That like, is that it's it was one of those. Yeah, I mean Cole Beasley is. It's very bizarre. It's been a bizarre season because because Beasley has been uh, a reliable uh, target hawk, and because it was thirteen week one, but then it dropped to four. Thirteen in week three, back down to two. It's it's been a strange ride here for Beasley, but Dawson Knox, you got it, it, with the tight end landscape, you got to. Just ride this out. A lot of points uh, it will go up in this game and just hope Knox grabs a touchdown. It's going to be a fun one. All right, our final matchup, Indianapolis Colts at 1-3, and three, taking on the Baltimore Ravens at 3-1. and one. Monday night football, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Ravens minus 6.5. Over-under is 45. I don't know if Mike is even... Uh, yeah, I'm super happy that, that Lamar Jackson's on Monday night again. Oh, okay. So I, that, I can't wait to lose again. Well, you will have lost by then. Yeah. You're playing me. I will. Have, I, I probably yeah. lost last night. Thank you, DK Metcalf. Thank you, DK Metcalf. <laughs> uh, Lamar Jackson on Monday night. I was I was referring to the fact that, see, you're you're attached to the Ravens with, with Lamar, and yep. yet you despise them because of what happened to Tyson Williams. That is accurate. It's it's a very uh, – there's a lot of inner tur turmoil over here. Right. Over I like John Harbaugh, and yet I'm very upset with him. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you guys got to work it out, probably get in a room together, break it all down. Uh, the Colts defense has been good against the run, only giving up 16 and a half fantasy points. We know it'll be Latavius and friends, um, from the late nineties. Uh, so <laughs> are you confident enough with the, the opportunities? Yes. The for game Latavius? script for Latavius? Yeah. He, I mean, 18 opportunities. That's, that's a number that we haven't seen, you know, from Baltimore Ravens running backs, but they look like they're. Yeah, they're going to feature Murray. Is there any reason to avoid Hollywood in this game, where or no. just stay in the flames? No, no I, I would be starting Hollywood. He he should have had just a, a string of great games in yeah. a row that is uh, wildly amazing for the position at wide receiver. Except for all the drops two weeks ago, you you need to be starting uh, Hollywood. All right, Other, you know Mark Andrews back to back top twelve weeks, no touchdowns on the season. Uh, he's fine. Although saying back-to-back -to -back top 12 weeks at tight end is not necessarily a real 
yeah, badge but, of honor from where you drafted Mark Andrews. Yeah, he's he's been good. What's funny with with Andrews is he's currently the tight end ten and has no touchdowns, and he's always thought of this uh, as this very touchdown dependent uh, tight end. But he's been putting up the yardage, hundred and nine yards two weeks ago, sixty seven mm -hmm. yards last week. Obviously, you're starting him if you've got him. What about the other side? Jonathan Taylor's in your lineup without question, but it gets shakier after that. I mean, Michael Pittman has been very involved. He has not ended up in the end zone doing his best Jacoby Myers impression. So that means he's been outside of the top 30 three or four weeks. But 12 targets, 12 targets, 8 targets. I don't mind taking a, a, a shot at him in this game. Yeah, yeah. He, he feels like somebody that Look, it it will hit for Michael Pittman. It's he's a little bit of a you know for Jacoby Myers. The difference is Michael Pittman is six four, two hundred twenty plus pounds. Like he is someone who I believe is he's he's turning into a a number one wide receiver. The uh, after the week one like strangeness of the the start of the season for the Colts, thirty five percent of the targets, thirty three. 25% like the targets are there he can make a big play happens I think it's it's only a matter of the time uh, only a matter of time it's not the best matchup here against the Ravens but the volume says that Pittman is a is a flex worthy player yeah flex worthy I would start him over Brandon Cooks which seems to be our barometer this week um, yeah, sure. but I don't expect great things against a very good defense but he's still a trade t for target because of the targets he's been receiving and if you look at their upcoming schedule They've got Houston, Tennessee, the Jets, and the Jacksonville Jaguars as four of their next five games. So uh, the breakout could be coming when you see this amount of targets. He's played some difficult matchups and is about to have good ones ahead. Would you play Cortland Sutton against Pittsburgh or Michael Pittman? Well, we it does. I do believe we got news that Teddy Bridgewater looks like he is um, going to start this week. So probably Sutton would you play Tyler Boyd against the Green Bay Packers or Michael Pittman I play Pittman yeah I think I go Pittman there by the way another update for you Chase Edmonds on the field for Friday's practice so oh, that great. is a good sign for those of you that have him and um, the Bengals plan is to evaluate Joe Mixon Saturday before determining his status so just add him to the pile of uh, what CMC and Dalvin Cook and now Joe Mixon that are Ugh. still really nice to have them evaluate him on a Saturday versus the game time decision where yeah. you, you have the night before if your waivers run at a certain time in the morning beforehand you don't have to it was at our request yeah thank yeah, you we sent him a, a note Bengals. and they said sure uh don't forget the rankings if you need to help with start sit decisions you can go to the website thefantasyfootballers.com without further ado let's jump into the face off Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Now the the you're listening at home on the podcast, you don't get to see the graphic, but the the visual graphic for the YouTube side mm -hmm. of Fantasy Faceoff, it it makes it appear like Mike and I are the only ones facing off when it's mm -hmm. always been a head to head to head competition. Mm -hmm. But it does kind of seem like Mike and I yeah. are facing off at this point. It does. Like we were just, you know, trading who gets first and second. Yeah. So Mike took it home this past week. I was in second place. Mike rode um, his own recommendations with Sam Darnold and DJ Moore uh, to victory. And, and of course, then Jason lost. So. Thanks, Travis Kelsey. <laughs> you suck. Travis D. Kelsey. Mm hmm. Uh, so without further ado, it is time to spin the wheel. Wheel of Shame. I'm so excited. Yeah. How, are, how do you feel? <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm <laughs> super excited. I can't wait to see uh, what I land on. Let's go for a ride. All right. We have uh, Jester hat, clown, clown wig. wig. Oh, no. Oh, what? Wait, what is this? No, the nerd the spinner nerd hat. Spinner hat. Okay. All right. Uh, this is good for hat day. It is. Good for hat day for me. So the producers are bringing around. Oh, but they also have another accessory oh, to go this along. Is, <laughs> this isn't a punishment at all. So so we have the. <laughs> so Jason has. We a, have the beanie. 
That uh, fits real well. Oh, what, this what, is tight. This is for children. And you got your lolly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wee! So a week after you were a baby with a pacifier, you have now grown up a little bit? You got No, I feel like you guys are teaching me. You you got to keep losing. You just I have mean, fun over here. So you got a lollipop and a spinner hat. I feel wait, like Jason is... Wait, did we take the plastic off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's ready to eat. Oh, wait, what you give, he's got a treat? He gets a treat for the show. Okay. And he is uh, oh, that's gross. He's diving in. Uh, okay, so week five. <laughs> this is a little disturbing. Again, the screenshots from these shows are, are wonderful. <laughs> week five, into uh, the face-off. We've all got a lineup. Uh, Mike and I com- will compete for first once again. So, Mike, why don't you kick it off with your quarterback? Uh, let me pull up. My- I will kick it off with my yeah, quarterback. Yeah, you do that. I'm going to stay in the flames with Justin Herbert. Uh, I know the matchup's tough really? against Cleveland, but the what's, the, what's his 6.8. Okay. So I feel like I'm saving okay. there, uh, saving a few bucks on Justin Herbert. And so uh, that's where I'm going. What what flavor lolly is that? It, this is classic lollipop, just lollipop flavored, flavor. <laughs> which is just sugar. It just tastes sweet like sugar. Wee! <laughs> All right. Um, uh, my quarterback is Jalen Hurts. I wanted a rushing baseline at seven thousand. I he's kind of that in the middle price tag where I feel like in a cash game I'm going to get points. I have upside. Don't break the bank, but I'm not saving a ton. Who was it again? Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Right, Man, Mike. I'm riding the snake. I'm putting the rookie in Trey Lance at fifty seven hundred uh, against the Arizona Cardinals. So if he doesn't start, you've got to do a fifty seven hundred. If he does not, if he doesn't start, I have uh, is it Heineke. I have a hundred dollars remaining on my salary, and I would just I would move up to uh, Trevor Lawrence. Okay, so that's the so point. I do have the backup option, but right now it's going to be Trey Lance. Uh at running back, I'm not I'm not playing one of these weeks right now without Derrick Henry. So me neither. We'll Derrick get that Henry, out of the way. Me neither. <laughs> All right. Well, then Derrick Henry doesn't matter. All right. And I've got the other one. I'm going to go with James Robinson at six thousand. Uh, Jacksonville giving him twenty plus opportunities two straight weeks, and I've got Leonard Fournette at fifty two hundred. My same start of the week. All right, I've we actually got, got him as well as my flex. So. Okay, well, uh, okay. I'll, I'll go with my other flex since it's a running back. I went with my start of the week and Damian Williams. Okay, and what was his price? He was at fifty six hundred. Okay, I do not have Williams. Who's your flex? My flex is Kadarius Tony. Ooh. Uh, he's super cheap 4k against that Dallas I mentioned I want pieces of that game and that's a real cheap way to get exposure and your running backs were Henry and Fournette Fournette okay I have Tony so getting into the wide receivers <laughs> I've got Kadarius Tony the other two I have Devonte Adams maybe you've heard of him and I'm going Antonio Brown uh, at 5,200. So Adams okay. is 8,200. Brown at 5,200. Tony at 4,000. I have Antonio Brown as well at 5,200. Um, I am combining. <laughs> oh, wow, man. man. Well, we've got some crossover. It's going to be but, quarterback battle. Um, I went with Jamar Chase uh, at 5,800. Uh, that's this a, is that's it, a good play. I mean that that would really hurt if he uh, st- you know stinks and hurts my lineup. But um, and I've got Marvin Jones Jr. at 5,700 um, against Tennessee. My wife. sucker for Marvin Jones Jr. Yep, he's a lolly, lolly for oh gross. Uh, at the wide receiver position, I'm sticking with my man DJ Moore. The price is going up, but he is an absolute stud this year at 7,500. I've got Deontay Johnson against the Denver yeah. Broncos. Just take that shirt uh, PPR value at 6,500, and I figured that somebody would have Marvin Jones, and I'm so I went with the the budget version. He's so cheap. I'm going with Lavisca Chenault at four point eight. Yeah, forty eight hundred <sighs> against the Tennessee Titans. I love that pick in a He's full so, PPR. That's very so nice. affordable. Uh, my tight end and my defense for tight end. I'm actually taking a shot on Johnny Smith at only thirty three hundred. Okay, uh, I don't that hate match it. Matchup against Houston, and then I'm going to go on defense. I don't know if you guys end up with the same one. It's kind of the chalk pick of the week. Washington twenty three hundred. Mm. It's where I could save some money, so I could spend up on Devontae Adams elsewhere. So those are my uh, tight end. And yeah, deep. likewise, I do have Washington uh, at that price point. And at tight end, I went Mike Gesicki, 4200 mm. Another affordable option, but in a PPR uh, league like DraftKings, you're going to uh, hopefully have a lot of volume his way. We're both getting down with Gesickness because oh, I no. got him at 4200 as, that one. as well. That, that I mean, especially now with Devontae Parker limited, I mean, that that's just – that has increased the odds that Kasicki has a solid game. Uh, and I went with the Minnesota Vikings at 3K against the Detroit Lions. Don't the, mind it. 
Uh, the Lions giving up multiple sacks a game, and the Vikings rank very high in pressure rate. Okay, well, we'll be back next week. Someone is going to be spinning that wheel. And uh, I think Jason, baby, now he's a small kid. Next week will be some teenager theme. And then, yeah. you know, move into adolescence. You can lose the well, whole year. We'll I, I did win the first week, so I plan I on winning I don't remember this week. that. Of no, course. I don't. Oh, it was when you lost. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Now, I, now I'm starting to. I'm sorry to place <laughs> Memory's it. coming back. Download the DraftKings app now. Use the code BALLERS this week. New customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's the code BALLERS, only at DraftKings, the official dra daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Oh, man, this is a bit of a backfire. He is licking the sucker in my direction, which is <laughs> I, I'm going to file a report. Um <laughs> I did yeah, where, host. Where's HR? <laughs> you can check out the uh, the uh, DFS show, which me and Matthew Betts uh, comes out today. It's probably already out, right, this morning? Yeah, Andy stepped in. I did. Betts got first in another one of those. Uh, he did. I, I One of the things that I mentioned on the show is how much fun DFS has been for us Arizonans who have never got to play. I didn't know if I would attach more to prop bets or sports betting or whatever the case may be. It was DFS, and it is for me. I, I enjoy making lineups every week, and I, I got to close this thing down so I can get away from this very scary-looking <laughs> man. Will you direct that to Mike for a minute? Uh, BallersDFS.com if you want to enter some tournaments with us. I'm closing it out. Sunday Live, one hour before the games. Mike will be with you this week. Oh, And uh, good luck. Enjoy the football. Good luck. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.